All right. Welcome. Okay. Welcome back to the Owen Schmidt Show. Down, like he says. That's right. The Owen Schmidt, just the Owen Schmidt Show, live from Owen Schmidt and Davidson Brothers Music Hall. I have with me Drew Rubenstein. I'm back from the wilderness, or just <laughs> at least for a, a week or two here. Yeah, we'll see. But uh, happy to be back here. Okay. First of all, I forgot to introduce myself, David Igono. I've been on the show. Every week now, I guess. Yes. Something like that. It's been fun. Special guest, Alonzo Washington. Yes, sir. Thanks for joining so, us. So we're going to skewer you with the, the questions about your playing time, what you're doing now. And I'm joking. It's not a skewer at all. We're just going to talk like former players do. <laughs> Bring it on. Okay. <laughs> so ob obviously. obviously, last week was not spectacular from a Mountaineer perspective. Before we even get into your background, how you even came to West Virginia. Hey, here we go. Dun, dun, dun. He made it. Here we go. Uh, he made it. Uh, <laughs> yes. 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 He's here. Fashionably oh, late, right? That's fashionably thing. late to my, my own gig. That's not good. Oh. Alonzo, thanks for <laughs> being on the show, brother. It's the only way to go <laughs> sometimes. It's the only way to go. So... Alonzo, what, I mean, before we jump into the game, Nick, this Iowa State, all that, can you remember playing in a game or having a season such as this in your playing days, or is that it? This is a brand new experience for you. When you say a season such as this, you mean a, a big season? I mean, it's, it, this is Mountaineer you football. You define it. Yeah, you define that. <laughs> this is Mountaineer football. And I mean, every season to this state in this community is, is a big season. It's this kind of a season, this kind of an experience. That's the reason I came here, really. But um, I, do, I do remember actually the first game I actually got in as a freshman was against Missouri. And what I can remember <laughs> was walk, running out in the field and I was, a, I was a center and a guard at the time on the offensive line. And I line up on line of scrimmage, and their their defensive linemen were, I mean, huge. I mean, honestly, I, I think I started to hyperventilate at one point. And this guy, uh, Dan Harless, standing next to me, he was playing center, I was playing guard. He looks at me, he says, hey, are you okay? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I, of course, I did fine, but I mean, that was, uh, that was my first memory of real playing time. I mean, we, I got in a few other games before that. That season, that was a Sugar Bowl season, 93, 94. And, um, you know, they weren't really significant games because they were blowouts at that point. Um, but but the, the you know, Missouri game was the first time I remember actually getting significant, uh, real playing time in a game that mattered. Yeah. You know. Now, you're saying, you're saying that every season, WU football is an important season. <clears throat> Excuse me. How, how do you know that? Where are you from? Why did you choose WVU? Well, it's, it's kind of, well, <laughs> that's not a good question. My parents went to University of Pittsburgh. My mom worked at the University oh. of Pittsburgh. I had a brother I that divided. actually. did. Yeah, well, not, not quite. I had a brother that played at the University of Pittsburgh. He was a fullback at the same time I was playing here at West Virginia. That's interesting. Um, so I was a black sheep of the family. Uh, but I'm pretty sure if he, if, had he been good enough, <laughs> he would have probably came to West Virginia. Are you, are you still welcome back in your uh, by your family? I, I, my parents never missed a home game except <laughs> when they whenever we played Pitt. Their blue and gold looked fun, looked a little funnier. They <laughs> <out of here. laughs> yeah, didn't look quite as sharp as our blue. You know, yeah. So, you know. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> this time uh, of year makes you miss the backyard brawl, right? All yeah, of you guys. No this is, kidding. No, but, uh, not to get too much on a tangent, but this is the time of year where it's. Uh, you gotta reminisce and, and just be a little bit sad that that's you see Florida, Florida State, Alabama, yeah. Auburn, uh, South Carolina, Clemson, and then West yeah. Virginia, Iowa State. Yeah, in yeah. Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> it's you know it is depressing because what a great what a great rivalry uh, blah, 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 rivalry that was you know what I mean and to take something away like that. It doesn't have to be taken away as far – that can just be another game for us. You know what yeah. I mean? Why not have those games? Uh, now it's going to take, you know, how long for us to develop uh, – can't really develop anything like that, some sort of, you know, 
clash because we're so far away. You know what I mean? Yeah. It right. Doesn't, doesn't seem. I guess Kansas. Yeah. It, well, and even with Alonzo, you won't. You don't. I mean, growing up in Washington, you're right there in the middle. Most yeah. of your family's pit, West Virginia, seventy miles. You can't. I mean, you can't replicate what what was there. And oh, it, it was it was huge. But but I, I knew when I came to Morgantown for my recruiting visit, and it's there's just nothing like it. You know, you come to a game here at Mountaineer Field. Uh, there's no pro team. There's no pro basketball. There's no pro hockey. No pro football. I mean, this is the pro team. This and this is kind of the unifying factor. You know, the Mountaineers are up in the top when it comes to merchandise sales. Now, that's pretty. If you ask me, that's pretty phenomenal. Uh, when you think about it, the size of our state, the population, and the fact that, you know, from a merchandising standpoint, we're up in the top. And, but if you yeah. go anywhere in the state, you're going to see blue and gold. <laughs> so Absolutely. That, you know, so it's kind of it's one of those things when you come and visit, you know this is a place you want to play. Yeah. You know, it's just it's it's a no-brainer. It's cool. That's Owen. so crazy. You know, I, what you were talking about as far as the marketing aspect of oh, you know, the talking university. About money? You know, oh, I'm just saying, you know, it's you know, and then there's obviously that other stuff with the, you know, players getting paid or whatever. Oh, I but it's so about true. Clauses, it's, but so. it's so true about West Virginia, it's just, that is signified with the state, you know what I mean? You see a picture of the state, there's always, a, you, you Google it, you know, that's the first, the emblem's the first thing that pops up, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just to what Alonzo said as far as merchandise sales, I mean, when you think about it, we shouldn't be at the top of any merchandise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's no way. It's loyal but, fans, man. I mean, you look at all the other conferences, they probably have eight or nine t uh, teams or colleges in that conference that outnumber our state population as far as fan bases, yeah. you know, by itself. So it's, there's a lot of pride and there's a lot of uh, identity that goes along with playing for WVU. Um, your family, being Pitt fans, graduates, when they saw you at West Virginia, did they come to realize that it was different here than it was there? Did they... Did they Gain that appreciation, or, or, or did their pit ties cloud that judgment? I wasn't invited to Thanksgiving dinner this year, <laughs> but no, they, they, uh, they, <laughs> they did. They, rec they recognize it. Yeah. There is a huge difference. I mean, yeah. at, at, at the time that I was playing, my brother was playing. We were packing our stadium. You know, our home opener. We, we had a seventy-two thousand fans. I think it was a, 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 a attendance record that year. Year. Okay. Um, you go into the pit games. You buy a ticket and you go sit wherever you want. You know? <laughs> so I mean, it's, it's just a whole different red flag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, I'm not slamming Pitt. Sure. I, I mean, honestly, not I was a much. Pitt fan in the '80s. You know, <laughs> and, but when it came to down time, when it came time to uh, select a school, it, you know, it, it kind of and you start looking closely at West Virginia, Pitt. You know, it, it goes beyond just being a fan. You start looking at hey. What's the team about? What's the community about? What's the state about? Where are the fans about? And, and this kind of made it was, you know, like I said, you go to a pit game and get twenty or thirty thousand people there, and you got forty thousand empty seats. You come to West Virginia, we're having a mediocre season, and we're still putting fifty, sixty thousand people in the in the yeah. You know, in it. So it's just, you know, my parents they they couldn't argue with that. Yeah. Neither could my brother. We still talk a little bit of trash on each other. <laughs> you know, <laughs> during, during every season. Have but, to. You know. Wow. David and I were talking to Alonzo before, Owen, about his playing career, and, and Alonzo, I, th I think you have an interesting story that, that people find fascinating, and in, in that you, you ultimately had to retire from the game earlier than, than you wanted. Explain to people what exactly happened there, and, and what did that teach you? Because someone at that time where I, I would imagine football was your life, and to have it taken away from you, what was that journey like uh, moving forward? Well, I will say this, and I actually spoke on this, I used to speak on this subject um, I spoke to uh, Dr. Zeitz. I don't know if you guys know Dr. Oh, Dan no. Zeitz. Okay. Absolutely. We know hey, who Dr. Zeitz is. <laughs> That's two right. Dudes. Wimp City, David. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, he's still using that two dude. So oh, he's still oh, yeah. using that. Cards. You That's his the business line. Cards? Well, he's got t-shirts <laughs> made, I think. He's a mean badminton player, uh, though. Oh, I've heard. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I used to go speak on this subject, actually, because it's, it's really uh, interesting how I how the way my career ended because my the, the way my high school career ended kind of prepared me for my journey 
you know. And what, it, what occurred was, you know, going into my senior year of high school, I was a pretty touted recruit. You know, I was in some magazines, like Street and Smith magazine. I was a tight end back then. Although at 6'3", 255, 260, you're going to be a guard when you get here, which is what <laughs> happened, you know. Huh. But, um, you know, going into my senior year, I was doing really, I was doing really well. I, I, I went to a few camps, put up a good showing, put some good numbers up. Um, second game of my season, I, I uh, tore my MCL on my knee. So I go from getting literally uh, garbage bags full of, of uh, mail from colleges uh, to a couple pieces here and there. I, I went from getting hmm. you know, several phone calls a night from you know, UCLA and, and the Gamecocks and Florida State and Notre Dame to um, one call that week from basically each school to find out, hey, did you really get injured? You did? Then you just, Interesting. Right. Uh, oh, so, wow. Yeah, so then there was this big dead spell for about eight weeks when, while I was, while I was mending because an MCL injury, you don't have to get surgery. You can start rehabbing right away. And, and so I played in the last okay. few games of the season, then the phone starts ringing again. But it was a wake-up call, <laughs> you know, because it's like, hey, I didn't really have the grades. At that time, I had like a 2-6 grade point average when I got hurt. And my dad said something that was very sobering. He said, son, you know, he says, if, if, if you don't get back and start playing football, you don't have the grades to get in college. Hmm. I never thought of that. Wow. <laughs> never thought of it, you know. So when I started here at West Virginia, I always focused on my grades, always. <coughs> always had above a 3-0. Um, always just one or two B's in my report cards. Coach Nealon never cared if I went. I, I, I dare say this in public, but he really didn't care if I went to class or not because I, was, <laughs> I made the grades. <laughs> you know, and, and my roommate and I, we had the same class. You had that pass too, right? <laughs> I did not have that pass. I, no, had, we, to go, no. I had to go to class. Well, yeah. My roommate saying, and I, we, we would be that. in the same class. His name was Mike Logan. And we would be in the same class as freshmen. You know, and I, I, now my overall grade point average is like a 3-4, three, 3-5. Three, so this is the second semester, and I'll never forget, um, he wouldn't go, and I wouldn't go. We'd both sleep in. And we'd go to practice the next day, and uh, Al Johnson would be like, hey, uh, these guys need to be there uh, at 5.30 a.m. to run Law School Hill for missing class. And it'd be, uh, you know, Mike Logan. And he'd go down the list, and my name would never be on it. <laughs> but, it but it's because I didn't. I, if you were I could committed. do right. If I could, I could, I did what I needed to do to make yeah. the grades. Yeah. Um, so I'll never forget that, you know. But but to get back on my story, and I'll, I'll try to keep it kind of brief, is you know I, I get in my freshman year, I get redshirted. Um, so I work on gaining some weight and all that, which never worked for me. Um, I wish I had been 40 back then, because then I would have been good on the weight. <laughs> uh, then uh, I I, I uh, get to my next year, freshman year eligibility wise, we're going undefeated. You know, I get in about six. I get to play in about six games total. Um, play behind what was a fantastic offensive line. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we had guys like, well, going in that year, we had guys like Mike Compton the year before that, right. guy like Lorenzo Styles, Rich Bram. Rich Bram. You know, I mean, Ooh. we had some, some really mean characters that were playing then. And, um, but I learned a lot because those guys are professionals, and they treated the game like professionals, mm -hmm. you know. So I learned a lot playing behind those guys. So after that year... I go into spring ball the following year. It's going to be my sophomore year. And uh, I had a talk with Coach Mike Jacobs, and he's since passed, rest his soul. Um, and, you know, he told me, look, you're one of my three top interior linemen. Problem is, all three of you are guards. <laughs> so he says, I want to move you to center. So I start taking snaps at center, and we, I was going to be the starting center. This is in, towards the end of spring ball. And um, at that point, I was working out in the weight room, and I was squatting, and I felt something in my back kind of. You knew kinda, it wasn't right. Yeah, a tweak, and uh, <clears throat> what had happened was a vertebra had, uh, had kind of fractured some and shifted out of place, and then they had to, they had to put a rod there uh, to keep it from, you know, mm -hmm. from being unstable, do a, a graft and fuse it all together, and I just really never was able to get back on the field again after that. But Coach Nealon told me, he pulled me aside, and he says, listen, I want to tell you something. He says, you know, at that point I had my grades were great. I was on the honor roll. I was on the uh, academic honor roll every semester. He says, um, we're going to keep you on your scholarship. You know, hmm. you, you, didn't wow. have, you, know this, you did everything we asked you to do. You got injured, so we're going to keep you on a, uh, what they call a med medical scholarship. And, uh, you know, I was thankful for that, but it was because of 
what happened to me in high school yeah. kind of the wake up call yeah you know that that kind of put me in a position to finish my college in four years go to law school and the, the greatest surprise i ever had was when i was in law school my uh first year of law school was actually what it was my fifth year eligibility wise Wow. for uh, football, so they, they, they were allowed to uh, use my, my uh, medical scholarship to pay for a first-year law school. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's really awesome. That's, yeah, that's rare. Was. I mean, <laughs> very let's rare. be honest. That's, yeah. that's an accomplishment. It was so. very rare. You know, but, it, it, you know, it was great. So I'm very thankful to be where I am today because I think the uh, Mountaineer family kind of took care of me in that sense. You've been an attorney in town for, with Flaherty since Paul Bonasso for how long? Well, since 2002. Okay. Yeah, I wow. finished law school in 99, and I... Uh, they went Flaherty since Bowman since 2002. Now, I started in our Charleston office, but I've been up here for the last six, six years now. Okay, great. What, what's your message to, because you said you do speak and, and you have, I mean, football players, and, and not just football players, anybody, when you go through a crisis like that, it seems you can go one of two ways. And it sounds like you, you had learned you didn't want to, veer down a, you know, the wrong path and, and, and kept that mindset. So how, how do you get that through to and, and, students and, that you speak to? Uh, you know, my message is you're only one play away from a change of career. Anytime you step on the field, it's one play, you know. Um, you never know when that play is going to be. But not many people, not many college athletes or professional athletes for that matter, get to retire on their terms. The um, majority are injured and have to give up because their bodies give out. You know, so my message is, if you're a student athlete, the key is you're not an athlete student, you're not an athlete, you're a student athlete. Focus on the grades and focus on being an athlete second. Um, yeah, you want to be the best athlete you can be. And if you are the type of athlete that we want here with the Mountaineer family, you're not going to slack on either of those two. <laughs> You know, yeah. and, and that's kind of my message. Student first, athlete second, you know. Yeah. So. I, think, I think college sports has become, it's had to evolve with all the scandals and all that, uh, you know, academic trouble that's happened throughout the years. You know, now you get recruits. It's a, you're getting a well-rounded athlete now. You know, you're getting a kid who's not only as good on the field as, you know, and in the classroom as well. Which is nice to see because you shouldn't have to be worrying about kids going to class. I mean, just go to class. Literally, if you just go. That's half the battle. I'm, that's half the battle, you know what I mean? <laughs> just getting there to class. And then, you know, you pay attention, take a couple notes. It ain't rocket science, you know. <laughs> you can figure it out. It, uh, trust me, you might have to read it like ten times, but <laughs> you'll get it eventually. You know what I mean? It'll stick. You know, It'll I, stick. And following up on that, I, I tell people all the time, you, there are no, there's no such thing as a dumb jock at this level. You cannot play this sport. Can't play the game if you're if you're not don't have brains. You just can't. Too much going on. Right. There's too much going. On. The game has been uh, it's sophisticated now. Absolutely. You know, it's not the bump and grind like it used to be. Really. <laughs> you know. I mean, but think about it. Big Ten football. I mean, what is that? That's downhill football you know now you know with all these wildcat schemes and all this other stuff it's it's a difficult and let me tell you something i am no i'm a very i have a you know i probably i don't know what it's called my learning disability but it's probably just that i am who i am or whatever but i mean it takes me you know i have to read a page five or six seven times to actually understand something you know develop going into these professional you know offenses you're talking 140 pass plays you know 60 to 70 run plays for one game you're not even going to run that many plays yeah, that's the part that always you know and I, I never understand it because it to me i guess it's a thing where it's quantity over quality because you know we'll run one play at the beginning of the season and never run it again and then we'll call upon it like towards the end of the season when nobody knows it. Yeah. And it's like a scramble for you got to remember. I was going to ask you, when you were in the NFL, do you remember a couple situations where some obscure play that was never run and then all of a sudden they're calling it in a oh, crucial yeah. situation? Oh, yeah. And they always, you know, the term be a professional. You know what I mean? Know what you need to know before you need to know it. Which is, you know, that's how you survive, obviously. You got to. 
you, you need to know, you know, and you got to be smart. And that was, I had a piece of advice given to me from, uh, I can't remember his name right now, but I just gotten drafted to Seattle. And he was playing Charlie. Uh, Whitehurst. I believe. Quarterback. Yeah. Charlie Whitehurst. Whitehurst. Well, Charlie was playing, and then there was another cat. I can't remember who. I feel bad, but whatever. Too many hits in the head, whatever. I can't remember. <laughs> Yikes. But uh, he said, you better not fall behind because tomorrow we're going to install twice as much. I was like, oh, man. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you freak out. Like, for a player like me who has to literally, you know, take notes on notes, you know, to build those patterns where you remember, it can be – it's frustrating, and it can be stressful. You know, I'm one of them guys who had to be super – prepared so when i went out there there was no oh my gosh i had the yeah. worst anxiety in the world i mean we've all been there you know if yeah. not made on a, it, a test whatever you know that's that's the worst feeling on the on the field when you got four seconds to think about what you're supposed to do and then hut hope you go the right way <laughs> yeah if you're not yeah. sure what do you do Better ask oh, real saying, quick. There's, there's, there's no there time. Is no not there's, sure. there's no time to ask either. It's like, hey man, just point. I remember, just tell me to go right, and I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember like uh, every other sport I've ever played, I've always talked some type of trash. Like, you know, not like antagonistic, not angry, just you know, chopping it up, doing stupid stuff. Football, never talk trash. I'm always like, okay, so we're calling cover three. It's shade. I'm going over here, blah, blah, blah. And by the time I, in my mind, I'm ready to go, we have like five seconds left, and the receiver's hands are like this. Oh. I'm just like, oh, like, okay, focus. So I just, there's no, you might have selective jocks, but there's no dumb jocks. Yeah. They, they choose when to use their intellect, but yes. they're not dumb. Yes. I'd agree with that fully. Everyone thinks I'm one of those caveman types. I just dress, you know, I just choose to dress like this. <laughs> it's a to, front. It's a front. It's a front. To front, you know, I'm actually very, you know, sophisticated under the beard and the long hair. You know, I, got I, a, I bought one three-piece suit. I bought one while I was in the NFL. It's nice. Got it at Farm and Fleet. How it's, many times uh, have you worn it? I've worn every, when, when I played for Oakland, we had to wear them. Okay. And I think Philly, we had to wear them. It uh, they made you wear the suits, but I always had the the retro, the bargain deals, the Ron Burgundies. <laughs> yeah, always. <laughs> yeah, I can see if that. If I was gonna go in style, I had to have my own style. You know, a lot of them guys had like the Gucci and the Devil Wears Prada stuff, all that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, that's the type of stuff they're wearing. Makes sense. You know. Makes sense. Well, I mean, let's <laughs> let's talk about Kansas State. Let's, uh, I mean, let's get it out of the way. <laughs> it was cold. It was, it was cold. cold. It was cold and it I was, was there. dark. I there on the sidelines of my coveralls. My dad was next to me. He came in. Uh, disappointing. I thought. How was it disappointing? Because for wa Portland, watching it on TV, I, I was disappointed, but it was man, more so just a missed opportunity. What, yeah. what was the atmosphere like at the stadium? S student section was pretty weak, so I was, Really? Uh, yeah, which was depressing because aren't those free tickets? Yeah, I Man. mean, they're part of the student fees, so, I mean, you're already... You know what I mean? I never understood gift. that. Yeah. But uh, I guess we'll have to have a talk with the maniacs about that. But, uh, you know, cold game. I thought the guys were hyped up and stuff. Clint, ah, that poor guy, he is... Something's wrong. Something's been I, don't know if, I don't know if he's yeah. scared or if he's worried about something. He was so flighty. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of the word uh, for, I don't know, running scared? I, I couldn't yeah. tell. I mean, there was times in protection where, uh, you know, there was a guy, an extra guy coming off the edge, mm -hmm. and it was picked up in the turn, but it was almost that he didn't trust... Like you know, the tackle speak. to do what he yeah. was going to do. So he got rid of the ball real hmm. quick. You know what I mean? It was, there was a lot of plays where it seemed like he was super rushed in his, uh, his efforts. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll def I definitely want to hear your guys' take. But I just, 
a lot of this, a lot of sideways running. No, you're right. Yeah, of, you know, I, I mean, I'm always the bad guy when it comes to these things, but his confidence, I, I use that word as a big, big bucket to catch everything because I don't know if he's hurt. I don't know if, I don't know, okay? Right. It's been a rough month for him uh, outside football and, and, and just on the field and all that, and he's a senior, but the past two or three games, I mean, the confidence, I always look for a quarterback with a three-step, three five-step, or seven-step drop. That back foot, you can tell how confident they are by how they stick it into the ground. I haven't seen that back foot stick into the ground not one time this month. Um, what do you think? You're an O-lineman. What, what did you see? I think usually it's because the rest of him was sticking in the ground. He took a lot of hits. <laughs> yeah. He's taking a lot of hits. Yeah. He's, yeah. Gotten, you know, he's gotten banged up. He, he, does get a, he, does get a lot of ha he does get happy feet. Um, a couple breakdowns in protection, I think, is going to cause your quarterback to be a little bit reluctant. Um, to hang in there, you know. Yeah. Uh, but at his, with his uh, size, he doesn't really have the option of running very often. You see, we all saw what happened when he decided to run the game, the ball, a couple uh, games ago. I think he might have uh, been hurt on that play and, and might have needed to get evaluated. But, but one thing about the game last week that I did like is I think we've got a, a great quarterback to be. Uh, for the next up Ooh, and yes. few years. So saw I think some good things. A lot of good things there. Definitely saw some good things and very promising. Yeah. So so yeah. let's I mean, let's go there. Should he play? Should Skylar Howard at least get a half? If not start I, Saturday? I don't want, I wouldn't want to make that call. I, I wouldn't want to be a person to make that yeah. call, but well, I would say no. Well no? Here, here's here's my take on that is you guys are just talking about injuries and Clint, I don't think anybody can question his heart this season or the last two no. years. He has such no, a huge yeah. heart, and he's a senior. I understand he wants to play, but he's had at least three documented concussions in 12 months. I guess that's the part of me that wonders, <coughs> does there come a time when that's what WV's doctors are for, and we'll, we'll see what they decide. But at, at some point, you look at his, his well-being, and, and do, you, do you just say, hey, Clint, we want to make sure you're healed up thankful for everything you've done let's let you prep for a month and, and prepare you for the bowl game and try to have you go out the right way in that bowl game and just say you know your health is is too important for us at, at this point and just let Skyler have that that game experience that that would pay some dividends next season and on the flip side I understand Clint Trickett just based upon I don't know him well personally but just based upon what he's shown of course he's one going to be in there I mean there's no way he's going to want to sit out but I guess I, I look at it from that perspective as well. I mean, I'll I'll be honest and I'll I'll say I don't I don't think he should play until whatever bowl game that, that they play and simply because over the past two seasons, like you said, the two things you know about Clint Trickett, um, one, he cares. He cares. Yeah. Cause you're not I mean, what is he? We'll give him six three. I'm gonna give him one seventy five, simply out of respect for the fact <laughs> that he works out. Um, that being said, you can tell, I mean, it's like a deer when the, the headlights hit it. They're just like he, the the past month or so. He's he just he needs a break. He yeah. needs a break. So I, I wouldn't, for me, I wouldn't even play him. Say, hey, Skyler, this is you. Um, as far as him being ready to play, we're gonna find out uh, pretty soon. I would like to see it before spring. Just being honest. I mean, why not play against Iowa State? I'm not saying Iowa State is to be slept on. That's a whole other conversation. But what I mean, what are, what are your yeah. thoughts? Is the bowl for sure? Is they're going. Yeah, they're I mean, going. they're going. To, it might be the the furniture bowl or the cactus bowl but or something like that. For but sure, then. yeah, being at being at six wins, they're 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 locked into a bowl game. I say, too many bowls. I say, let them play. I say, give them the give them the experience. Skyler or, or Skyler. Skyler. Okay. Um, has he ever been cleared with these concussions? Doesn't it? Isn't it like Clint, a rule you have to sit out like two weeks? No, there like there a is a progression that they have to go through, and I think it, it depends on the. Severity of concussion, you may know more, but what happened to Clint last year was he suffered a concussion. It was never actually diagnosed, and then he got a second concussion in that Texas game that knocked him out, I think. I think he was laying on the ground, and that's when they diagnosed him of having concussions in back-to-back -back games, and then that's when he sat out. I think it was the Kansas game last year. Yeah. This season... You know, he, he he took the hit and he was out, and they ruled a concussion. They took away his his helmet on Thursday, and so then you have to go like 
so many days without headaches doing certain amount of things. I mean, there, there's, some, there, there's a level. It's not necessarily two weeks, but it's, you have to do all of these tests without having any side effects to, well, to ultimately I know, be cleared. I know in, you know, the NFL makes you take a pretest before the season, you know, see what you grade out on, and then, you know, whenever something like that occurs, you take the test again to see where your reaction time is on answering the questions, you know, you're remembering. There's different, uh, trying to remember what some of the tests are, you know, it'll show pictures of like a squiggly line and a circle, and then you'll have to remember them, you know, questions back, like it's all memorization stuff and okay. matching whatever word association as well, but, uh, uh, you know, it, it's tough right now. You don't you don't want to say, hey, you know, we're thrown in the towel, we're done for the season. But I think it's great to get, you know, some play under his belt, like we said. You know, give Clint some time to rest up, prepare for this his you know last game. You know, uh, if he wants to play, I, I think let him play. If he's if he's feeling good, he's a senior. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's paid his dues. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if times are getting tough, then we gotta we gotta be realists at the same time. You know what I mean, yeah. you gotta look towards the future. It's you know, and uh, it's a tough call, man. It's a tough call, especially when he's been the QB, the guy this year. But right. uh, you know, like you said, there's been there's so many ups and downs this season, and just. The way the play has gone since the TCU, you know, and it's just, yeah, I don't know. Tough call because you hate to, you hate to be be like that, but you know it is what it is. Wasn't yeah. that the ironic part with the Kansas State game was going in? It was Kansas State plays perfect football. They don't beat themselves. They don't get penalties. They don't turn the ball over. And then watching that, certainly WVU shot itself in the foot. But I think what's what's most disappointing was Kansas State did not play Kansas State football and yeah. so you're at home on a Thursday night Kansas State is not on top of its game and you still let it slip away I mean not 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 to diminish Skylar Howard there's certainly positives to take away by the way he came in and finished it but I guess with the narrative going into the game and then the way the game played out you would think that was the the, the script that WVU would have wanted to, to be able to pull that one out it's, I mean, the one, the one line of, of stats or, you know, narrative that you're saying, Jake Waters, Kansas State's quarterback, he's a running quarterback. He threw for 400 yards. Um, that to me, I mean, I'm not saying that as an indictment on the defense, uh, more so as I'm saying that the game was not what everybody thought it was going to be, like you said, going into it. So anytime you have a quarterback that throws for 400 yards and, for the opposition, that's the Mountaineers game, you know, air raid offense. That should be their type of game, you know? So um, my last, my only point on Skylar Howard, I mean, he looked great, but that was in a half of play. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if you want to give him the baton um, unless he's been given the, the number one team, yeah. first team all, baton all week. Yeah. If, you, if he hasn't gotten the baton all week, do not give it to him uh, heading into – uh, Iowa State because that's just a recipe for that's a that's a sacrifice you know or maybe you do something like this you know you let Clint you know obviously take the start and then you see where the game goes and if it's not going in your favor then make a call at halftime you know what I mean I don't or make a call when you need to make a call but something you know I don't know what's going on up there but it'd yeah. be nice to see a solid finish on the season you know what I mean just to they're two and eight Iowa is two and eight. Yeah. Well, this okay. I, this Iowa State team that is two and eight, I'm they are that. they are alley brawlers. They, they are. I mean, they, they they are ready for the Mountaineers. But I'm just saying, it's like I don't. We better be ready because I agree. With it's you. gonna be cold, and it's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of hitting, dude. It's gonna be a physical game. Did you realize, Owen? Not to bring back poor memories, but Iowa State's head coach. Paul Rhodes, Paul defen Ro defensive coordinator of Pitt. Oh yes, in the infamous game when we, yeah. So he knows what he's doing. He knows how to Listen, coach a defense. Yeah. 
<laughs> Whatever. Sorry. Oh, Whatever. he went there. That was a rough he game. went there. Uh, before hey, before it, we forget, if you guys have questions, by all means, come up to the the mic, ask your question. I forgot to say that at the top, but Q and A, yeah, Q and A. Q and A. Don't forget. Whenever you want it. Yeah, don't forget as well. Uh, the depost.com from six to seven. Now we move the hours back so we can get. Some of the rowdy crew in here to watch the show <laughs> and talk about football. I want to get at something, Alonzo. I don't know if you do. You deer hunt? I'm so, oh, you deer hunt? Deer okay, hunt. so rifle season opened up on Monday. You, have you been out yet? I'm going to take my son out in the morning. Take him out in the morning. Nice. I wish yeah. you best of luck. Thanks. I uh, I haven't I haven't seen I haven't seen a thing. I haven't seen one deer. <laughs> I don't know what Not I'm bad. doing wrong, man. I'm not, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to I'm Maybe going to Dix. you're sophisticated. I'm going you need to, to go back to the caveman. I'm going to Dix tomorrow. I'm getting a big bag of Orange Crush, and I'm putting it out, man. I'm, I'm going to spend some money. I'm going to bait them in. Get me, a, well, get my, me some meat. You know, Monday, I didn't waste my time. It was too, it was too windy. Yeah, and it I was. knew I knew I wouldn't it say was. anything, and then yesterday, it was windy and rainy, and and when it's wet, you know, I, I wait for the, you gotta have the right day. I'm hoping we get some snow cover so that uh, it'll 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 bring them out, get them moving around, you know. That's what I'm talking about, a real deer hunter. Let's talk a little deer hunt. Did you get something last year? <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I'm actually I don't I don't hunt for meat anymore because I'd be the only person in my house eating it, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I'd be eating it for a year. But um, I, you know, but if I do get a deer, it's gotta have a, it's gotta be a buck. And I would, I would keep the meat for the freezer, and I would eat it, but I don't really do the whole doe thing. And I'm trying to, you know, more of a trophy hunter now yeah. that likes deer meat versus, you know, hunting for meat. Yeah. You know. I uh, last year we went out to Wisconsin, and the the wolf population in Wisconsin right now is just so it's it's huge. I mean, there's huh. for every deer track you've seen, there's a wolf track, and uh, I didn't see a dang thing last year actually no that's not true i saw a wolf and it was the coolest thing ever we we're actually doing a drive and i was sitting with my uh my uncle's nephew my little nephew and i had my scope up and it came out of this little clearing and it looked me right in the eye and it looked it looked hungry too i mean it looked at me and it knew it was it knew i was looking at him and my little nephew tapped me on the shoulder. He goes, are you going to shoot it? He's like, man, I don't know if I should. He's like, you know, so we like kind of like watched it and let it go. You're not supposed to shoot them, okay? But they're pests. Yeah. So if it, they happen to get a gut shot and, you know, whoever's gun it's from, it's whatever. You let them go. And I got a story <laughs> for you guys. I am, I don't, you guys, I don't know if you guys know, J, you know JT Thomas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I took him deer hunting. For, the f for his first time ever in his life about three years ago. And I don't know if he's told you, but he got a deer that, that year, and it was out in um, Preston County. And first he shows up, we go to go deer, we go, and I say, I'll be there at 5.30, you know. Well, I'm waiting at the gas station, you know, hour and 15 minutes, sun's coming up now, and I'm thinking, you know, here oh, we are. He's first thinking, day, oh. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. So, um... <laughs> I call him. He's just getting going, you know. So he shows up. Son's all like, we're not going to get anything. So he gets out of his his, uh, his vehicle. He's got this orange one-piece snowsuit. <laughs> you know, he looks like, uh, you know, uh, uh, the abominable snowman, you know. <laughs> and, and he can't even move. He's like, you know, waddling. He's got this big rifle. So we're walking through these woods. We dump, we jump a few doe, and he's just, you know, it's first time deer hunting, so he's going to shoot anything. And, you know, he holds his gun up, and he's got the, and he turn, he has it turned sideways. He's oh. from Florida, you know. He's, <laughs> you know, he's going to do the old drive-by. No, I'm kidding. He, he, no. But he squeezes one off. It's a thing on the run. Through, through the, the thing's running through the woods. One shot hits it. Didn't realize he hits it. About two hours later, we're, we're getting ready to come out of the woods. And some guys come along, trying to like, hey, did one of you guys shoot a deer and, and uh, drag it up by the road? And we're like, well, he shot it when he thought he hit it. And it turned out that he did hit it. It was a good hit, clean hit. The thing ran about 50 to 100 yards, and then it, it, it 
fell and died about five yards away from this trail you can bring ATVs through and stuff, which saved us from having to drive back. A ton, drive at, a ton of time <laughs> yeah, dragging. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. But that was, that was uh, JT's first. Uh, and then he tries to wow. gut it. And I, I'm, I'm watching him because he's not a hunter, you know. He wasn't a hunter. And um, I'm just watching him, you know, and he'd seen him fight with this deer and cut, trying to cut through this. And just finally, I just told him, give it up. You know, I got it for <laughs> Just give it to me. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. It's yeah. a very liberty, uh, liberating experience the first time you, uh, you know, put one down. If you, if, you're, if you do it right, if you get done the right way, you know, you take it down, you gut it yourself, you drag it out. I shot one last year on a hill and had to drag that thing. First, it was a great shot. I shot it, but the bad thing was there was a hill right there. So I shot it, and it ran, obviously, Ooh. over the hill. Unintended workout. Well, it rolled down the hill about 40 yards and was done. Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, 40 yards on an incline like this, carrying a 200-pound animal on your I mean, I about had a heart attack on the hill. Finally, I get it to the hill. My buddy's like, ah, oh, we could have just pulled it past this thorn bush right here. <laughs> it had been on this old ATV trail we couldn't see. <laughs> so we get it up, take it down, gut it, whatever. It's warm. I take it over to uh, Uncle Pete's, and he uh, cuts it up for me, and we put it in the freezer. Well, week two goes by, I come back to to camp and they had hung the deer testicles on my camper well there was a bear that apparently smelt the deer testicles and tore my door of my camper open destroyed my camper completely Wow! they were all laughing so hard I got back I was like are you kidding me dude that could have been me yeah but a bunch of you what? weren't, nobody was in there. Oh, geez. No, no, nobody was in there. It was on my old property, my little hunting, my little hunting shack. But yeah, just a bunch of deer stories, deer camp stories for the ages. I've, I've actually not shot deer because they were down. A yeah. Day. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think about that. I've like, seen them down. I'm good. thinking, I'm not dragging that thing out of there. You know, it's your lucky day. You know? <laughs> it's for real, though. It's for real. So, uh, bowl season. Oh, boy. Is it, I mean, what do you guys, what's your take on it? Is it a bummer if you don't go to a BCS bowl, or are you still happy with going to, you know, the, the, the Target Pier 1 bowl? <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. The, uh, I ben and the Jerry's, bowl the ben and Jerry's uh, chocolate ice cream yeah. bowl. Yeah, you can get a... What's, uh, gift what you, card what's your yeah? What's your take on all these bowls? Well, I'm gonna take your question and raise you a question. I think the real question that you're trying to ask is: Is it worth it if you're not didn't have a great season, right? To a certain I mean, degree, it's just do, do the kids really take it serious? I mean, I know it's a bummer when you're not playing a BCS bowl. We got spoiled with, you know, being able to play a couple, but I mean, I thought the other bowls were just as fun. I mean, the Gator Bowl was great. You know, I just, it's just wild how it's become so commercialized. Yeah. You know what I mean? And now there's Chick-fil-A, Papa John's, extra oil, <laughs> Target, Walmart bowl. Uh, you know what I mean? And yeah. that's one bowl. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... no, I, I, I agree with you. I, I think it comes down to the players, and I think it comes down after that to how the players are programmed. I mean, you know when we played, if we were going to a bowl game, uh, we weren't coming back without a trophy. Like, oh, yeah. Like, it, I, I, it was I, serious. That's what I'm saying. Like, do they take... The bigger bowl is more serious, or is it kind of just like a fun thing? Hey, we got to go play a whatever game in the off season. I mean, I I have a I want to hear what you guys think because I yeah. I could spout off on this, but let's we'll start with Alonzo. No yeah, pressure, absolutely. no pressure. You know, I think a, I think any time you play in a bowl game, you get a chance to get national exposure. I think it's a good thing. Um, as far as taking them serious, um, I'm from a little different area than you guys. 
we took them, we took the game serious. We were always happy to be there, but I'm not really sure we uh, did what we, <laughs> I, I, you know, put it this way: we were in New Orleans, 1993. I wish I would have been say. there with you. I can only imagine the great times you had. Yeah, it, all yeah, the it was all the yeah the practices you guys just going over sure had to do, and then those. At meetings at yeah. one and two at night, <laughs> and then the meetings, that, meetings that they would have just to make to take attendance. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know just. And then they put you. They put our hotel was at Le Meridian, right like across from your hotel is Bourbon Street. Oh, oh man. man! And then we're talking about this is a New Year's Day game, so it's New Year's Eve. Oh yeah. That whole week it was like you know you couldn't even sleep. Pretty much you could hear the people outside. You know it was it was but it was a good time. Um, so uh, it, it would appear, and I think there's a probably reason why they scored it up. I think it was 41 to 13, <laughs> <something>. <laughs> because we yeah. had some guys that uh, I played with, and I, I'll never forget. You know, I, my freshman year, I'd come to practice, I'd be in the huddle, and it's, it, and I'm like, he's, I'm thinking, are you guys still, are you guys sober enough to even be here playing? They, you could smell this alcohol reading oh, sure. these guys. And I don't know how they did it, but it was just, they, they could do it. They could, they, some of these guys were able to do it. I wasn't one of those guys, but, you Man, know. Yeah. I got some good, uh, actually I got a really good story here. We got about 10 minutes here. Bowl story. We're down in Atlanta. We're playing the Sugar Bowl. Huge for us, you know. I mean, this was like our first real uh, bigger bowl game in a, in a while. Obviously, you know. What I mean, for probably right. oh, since that game. Probably yeah, since that probably Bowl, since really. that game. Yeah. Really, you know what I mean? And we go, we get, uh, go downtown. We go out for a little bit. You know, it's my first real time playing that year, so I'm like, captain, do the right thing. You know what I mean? Sort of. I mean, I still had fun, but we go out, and I ended up uh, coming home early, and my roommate, who was uh, Sammy Marone. The venerable Sam Marone. Came back extra late, and he gets in, and it's, I don't know, probably 3, 4 in the morning. We got practice at, like, you know, I think we had, yeah, seven or yeah wake or up call was like 6 or something like that, or 5.30. Well, he goes, I'm going to take a shower. I was like, okay, man, sounds good. He might have, he must have been in that shower for two, three hours, <laughs> puking, throwing up, puking, throwing up, take, rinsing himself off. Finally, I knock on the door. I'm like, hey, we got to go, man. We got practice. He's like, I'm not going to make it, man. I was like, you got to, brother. You got this. We get him out the door. I don't know. Maybe lasted about 15 minutes in the meeting room. He's back, Ralph, and again makes it through practice. I said, "Man, I don't know how you did it." He goes, "I don't know either." We go out that night again. He does it all over again. I mean, that was like the, what the bowl games were about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they were just about having a good time. You worked so hard over the year, yeah, I mean, and then you get there, and everybody just cuts loose. I mean, there is a re reward. I don't know if that's even the right word, uh, but. It's a celebration of a season being finished. Um, I think it always comes down to finishing the task. If you get the task done, even if it takes a fake punt and you know, <clears throat> it's a couple of minutes left in the fourth <laughs> quarter, it doesn't matter. You know, you still did it. That's what that's what we've been saying the past two or three weeks. I don't care if the, the Mountaineers beat Iowa State three to two. I don't care. I don't care if Josh Lambert wins the game with one second left. Just win the game. Just win. <laughs> Just win the game. Just finish the game. Um, I think that's what you're talking about as far as some guys just being able to do it. Right. Um, that's not me. That's not my style at all. But yeah, everybody's at the end their... of the day, what is it, 40, 50, 60 guys? You're not, not everybody's going to be um, at, asleep at 6 o'clock, and not everybody's going to even go to sleep the night before their practice. You, so it, it surprises me. Everybody... Everybody's got their own routine, you know what I mean? And just to see some of the extreme regimens some of these guys go through, you know. And I'm not just talking about, like, the partying aspect, but just to, from the studying to wearing the same jock oh, yeah. strap for his entire uh, career or whatever, you know what I mean? It's, 
the regimens that players go through, even if it is, hey, man, I've been going out every Friday since I started playing football. That's what I do. You know, whatever. I mean, it's, it's pretty extraordinary to see how everybody conducts their uh, business in that, in that aspect of the world. Because it is, it's two totally different spectrums. Some people are purists, you know what I mean? eat healthy, sleep the regimented hours, they're always getting body on their work, and then there's guys that are old school, and, you know, they're just gifted athletes, do their thing. So it is a fun... Uh, who, who, who are some of the more tightly, tightly wound guys that... Mark Magro! <laughs> like, purist, the purist, as you say, yeah. yeah, Mark would be a purist, you know, very regimented, didn't like going out... Which there was nothing wrong with that, you know what I mean? It was just it's maybe what it took for him to play you know, at his Yeah, that that level was his play. game, you know what yeah. I mean? Some guys need to some guys are just animals. You know what I mean? And they gotta go out and get it out of their system and do whatever they need to do and torture themselves through practice and sweat it out and then do it all over again. <laughs> I mean, who knows? That's just the way people are built. But yeah. uh, it is it it is funny seeing, you know, Mark and I uh, considered, you know, in the weight room, you know what I mean, to be, uh, you know, obviously on the same playing field. Yeah. We were both like, he was obviously better at some things than I was. <clears throat> but uh, the night that uh, we did our big summer testing program, well, I went out with a bunch of the fellas because we were kind of celebrating the summer about to be over with. Which is a big deal. Which is a big deal, Especially man. Making it through some, oh, making God. it through summer workouts <laughs> is such a big deal, man. Cause I mean it's you let's be honest, getting through getting through college football, it's you never go home. You no. never go home. You're always like like the holiday Thanksgiving's coming up. You know what them guys are going to be doing? Working out. They're going to be yeah. working out. They're going to be here. They're not going to be with their families, you know? I mean, we played on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 That's really when the game yeah. used to be, you yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's a big sacrifice that you make, uh, and especially with the summertime. You think especially uh, when you're in college, it's like, oh, man, summer's coming. I'm going to be out on the boat no. doing all this fun stuff. No, you're going to be working out in the classroom. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, you're, you're lucky if you, one day you don't work out. Yeah, for real. And that day doesn't begin with sun and end with day. Like, I, every, like your whole entire summer is spoken for. I remember, it, this was kind of like probably senior year, maybe junior. People were kind of getting wore out yeah. with some of these workouts that we were doing. And uh, they said, oh, we're going to treat you guys to going to the pool. So they, I think you might have you might have been there. Were you there? No, no, I was gone. But I know where the story's headed. So they, the pool. Yeah. So they march us over to the pool. I'm Forced like rehab. That's yeah, that's what it was. It was a workout in the pool. What pool? Uh, that or the what? natatorium or one no? Of those it was just up uh, Kreps. Right by uh, where the, the old blockbuster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right oh, there, Kreps? right there. Like you guys are Wow. Yeah, we yeah we even Kicked went on a little kids. Yeah, we even, no, listen, 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 no. listen, listen. No. <laughs> they said it was uh, a, you know whatever uh, a day off. We actually had a hike through the woods to get to the pool. <laughs> then we got to actually swim, and we had to do like the running. Mike Barwis was just a, the crazy a run. monster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where were all the kids that usually are in the pool? Did you guys like kick them out for a couple hours? Oh yeah, it was it was almost kind of like we bullied everyone to one side. <laughs> like they were like, like we rented this one half. <laughs> Let me ask you that because we we had a similar situation. We did the auditorium. Could everyone swim? Because we had a couple that's guys. Always, oh, that's no. always the funniest, yeah, not couple funny guys moment. From Florida, you know, these big jocks, Dude. they're all muscular, and they're like scared to death of water. And, and I and it's only four feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And it's like, if you just stand up, you'll be two feet out of the water. <laughs> I don't know. I never... Uh, swimming always got me. Yes, it's hard to do, but I don't know. I mean, I'm cool with pools. Large bodies of water is like, you know, the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, yeah, that's you know, a little I, scary. I, you know, I'm okay. I'm okay about eight feet from the, uh, you know, the tide. I'm okay. You know, that is but, a little scary. But, uh, well... Do we got projections for this week? Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's wow. start with the... No, I'll start, I'll start off. Um... Uh, Iowa State is a tough team. I, they, they have one playmaker, and it's their tight end. So that yeah. basically tells you that they've lost 
eight games. Um, <laughs> just being, just being, unless they're tied in as Kellen Winslow Jr., I'm just saying, for the most part, you can't really uh, win a lot of games that way. Uh, Paul Rhodes, I think he's doing a great job with nothing. Um, I think they have one recruit for the 2015 class. One recruit. I mean, let's not even compare other colleges uh, in the Big 12, but to only have one less than three months from signing day, that tells you the, the uphill battle that, that he has, but that team is fighting and, and playing week in, week out. I, I said it yesterday. I, I think this is going to be a game where it comes down to special teams. It comes down to Josh Lambert making field goals. That offense, it doesn't matter if it's Skyler or, or Clint playing quarterback right now. They're out of sync. They're not getting the ball to Mario enough. They're not getting the ball to Kevin. They're not running the ball like we've been asking or, you know, looking for all season. So I think it's going to be a tight game, and it's going to come down to who's going to make field goals. Uh, keys to the game, I guess. Eliminate turnovers. Create yeah. turnovers for the defense. Uh you know, I feel like a broken record because I say the same stuff every week. <laughs> but it's me. like yeah. it's the make same a play story. on special teams, yeah, and you know, control the clock on offense. And I want to see the, you know, I'd like to see running backs go uh, north and south. Yeah, you know, that's the biggest thing for me is just we do we got too much of this going on and not enough of this. Yeah. Uh, but that's my. Uh, I, you know, I wonder if it's a game that's between the years that maybe is one the week leading up to it more so than even game day because I agree with you with what you said about Iowa State. They do fight, and last year's game in Morgantown proves that. They just wanted that game Let's more, even though there. they shouldn't yes. have won it. Yeah. And I, I think it's the same thing here. Does West Virginia actually want to be in Ames, Iowa or not? Because for bowl purposes, it probably does not matter if you beat or win Iowa State. Bowl game's not going to be like, oh my goodness, you beat Iowa State. We, we got to take you now. And if you lose, you're still going to go somewhere. So I look at it as, does West Virginia put forth the effort? I mean, a Paul Rhodes team is going to come out and, and, and punch you in the mouth. And yep. does West Virginia have that fight? Or is this just going to be the next step in a, in a downward spiral that we've seen in recent weeks? So I, I, I look at it as, what has this week of practice been like? Is, is the team really rallying together, or are they just kind of yeah, coasting? Yeah, because it is the last game, and, you know, I hope – I hope some of the younger guys realize that, you know, there's seniors on this team that are never going to play yeah. another regular season game. Oh, yeah. Right. This is going to be their last last game of football ever ever in the regular season. You know what I mean? So I'm hoping that the team is, you know, concerned for those guys. Right. You know what I mean? If anything. Absolutely. Hey, man, let's send them out on a win. You know what I mean? Uh, if that means anything to uh, – to teams anymore, you know what I mean? I, I feel like that should question. be a key element yeah. uh, in any team's uh, tradition. Hold up. So, my prediction is pretty simple. I'm, you know, former offensive guard, I'm basically, I'm, I'm the same mold as this guy, except for I'm, I'm fatter, slower, less athletic, <laughs> and can't catch. But at heart, <laughs> probably I'm a fullback. better athlete. Yeah. <laughs> and at heart, I'm a fullback, so. You know, these guys run a 4-3. I think we just run the ball down our throats. Run the ball down our throats, yeah. straight down the field until they load the box, then we throw it. Um, but, I mean, we, we run the ball very well when teams are respect – when they respect our pass, we can run really well. So let's start out running it. Make exactly. Them, make them respect the run. I mean – Owen's going to love you. That's it just, <laughs> it just been such it all a, season. It's just been such a struggle. It's like – I don't, we're, it's like we were shooting ourselves in the foot trying to force the pass game when they were literally loading the box with six players. That's you nice. know, when we're getting a yeah. hat on a hat and then some and an yeah. extra. Yeah. But uh, I, Yeah, I mean, la last thing I'll say is when you run the ball, your quarterback doesn't take hits to the head. Yeah. I, I mean, literally. And, and that's what's happened the past couple of my, uh, games. Cause they haven't been running the ball. And... Quarterback's it's, been getting hit. Yeah, he's been getting hit. You know, I guess that's that's the way it has been this year. It's just what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. Is that it the is. season? That's, yeah. <laughs> I second that's that. That's going to be on the, the video. At the it, is it, it is what it is. It is what it is. 2014 Mountaineer. <laughs> but, uh, 
<laughs> well, want to thank you guys so much for coming out again Wednesday. Uh, I'd like to thank Alonzo. Let's like say Drew and David. Thanks, Alonzo. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, apologize for my tardiness. Uh, I'm scolded. Uh, thanks again, though. Uh, don't forget, every Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. here live at Schmidt Saloon and Davidson Brothers Music Hall. And you can see it live streaming from thedepost.com. Thanks again for coming. Thanks. Let's go. Let's go.